Does it work? Yeah, can you hear me well? Perfect. Okay, hi, thank you very much for coming. So I'm Elisa and I work for Red Hat at Israel and I'm a team lead in the Container Management Initiative. Um, I'm curious, how many of you are working with containers today? Please raise your hands. Okay, I see about 50% of the audience. Um, anyone does that in production? Nice, almost the same number, I would say. Okay, so um, you probably know by now that working with containers involves uh, several different stages, and I would like to make a quick overview of those stages. First, we need to be able to containerize our app, and uh, well, we can see that it's typically doable today because there are many different methods and um, techniques around that. And next, uh, we should be able to run a container, or in other words, the ability to spin up a container instance. And that, of course, is also possible today with Docker, Rocket, and other technologies. And then things get a little bit more complicated because we want to run multiple containers. And I think this is where one of the greatest challenges lies today in this area, the ability to orchestrate containers, run a lot of containers on multiple machines, and while doing that, still have the insight and control and be able to manage such an environment. So today we'll be talking about three open source projects that can help us achieving the task of containers orchestration and management of such an environment, and they are Kubernetes, OpenShift, and ManageAQ. And I'll start with Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a relatively young project. Uh, its first release was announced two months ago, and what it does, it provides us with the ability to deploy, scale, and orchestrate containers across a cluster of a lot of hosts. And these are the core concepts of Kubernetes. Uh, so a node is a machine that the containers are running on. A pod is a group of containers, and it promises us that whatever containers are part of it are gonna be deployed together on the same machine. And it's actually the smallest unit with which the user can communicate to Kubernetes about containers. A replication controller, or how we also call it a replicator, is helping us with the scaling part. So we can tell it, uh, we would like to have three replicas of that pod, and it's going to keep an eye that that's the situation at any moment in time that we actually have those three replicas. A service is something that I call a traffic redirector, and it's actually taking traffic coming to its IP, and based on port mapping, redirects it to pods uh, based on the labels that are defined in its selector. A namespace is a partitioning ability and it allows us to create partitioning and isolation of the resources that the users are creating. And here comes OpenShift. Uh, so OpenShift is a PaaS, that's platform as a service, and its third version is actually built on top of Kubernetes, so it leverages all of those core concepts of Kubernetes that I just spoke about. But it does not only that, but it actually does more. So it takes uh, an application lifecycle and it provides developers with the ability to define how a build is supposed to look like. Taking uh, your, uh, let's say, Git repo and you committed a change, you're supposed to build it, you can build it into a Docker image, then how your deployment is supposed to look like, under which circumstances that deployment is supposed to occur, and then the runtime part, which running, again, orchestrated containers on host and keeping the replicas alive. And it also takes the services and extends that notion with routing, which is similar to services, but it provides us with an ability to do that with externally recognizable host names and not only with APs. And projects, again, allows us to group those resources and let's say you can give uh, every developer team a different project and group the resources uh, based on some criterion. So those two projects uh, allow us to orchestrate containers and run them on a lot of hosts. Uh, but when we're running that environment and we'd like to administer it properly, there are a lot of different questions that are raised. And some of them are actually very simple, but we are still should be able to answer them. And the simplest question would be, how many containers are running on my environment? In total, on every node, uh, does any node have enough resources? or how many distinct images do I use? Maybe I have 10,000 containers, but I have only uh, one image because they're all using the same image. Which registries are my images pulled from? Because maybe I'm using a test registry on my production environment and I would like to catch that on time. And this is where ManageAQ comes into the picture. 
So MetaGQ has been a cloud management platform or uh, a manager of managers, and it provides support for cloud and virtualization providers such as OpenStack and Amazon and uh, Rev and so on. And what it does, it uh, can connect to those environments, pull the inventory, perform its analysis, it can do smart state analysis of the virtual machines, it can perform uh, some workflow and orchestration based on tagging events and more. And since Kubernetes and OpenShift would probably anyway run in cloud or in virtualized environment, it felt kind of natural to add support for those two frameworks within ManageAQ. So we introduced a new provider type, and uh, it's a container-based provider type, and we provided support for Kubernetes and OpenShift within ManageAQ. Is anyone in the audience familiar <coughs> with ManageAQ? Please raise your hand. I see three hands, okay. <laughs> so um, those of you who raise your hand, uh, if you pull the master from the upstream project, you will notice a new option, uh, this option in the UI, it's in name containers. And uh, here I have an example of two different providers. Uh, one is pointing on a four node uh, OpenShift envir environment and the other one is pointing on my Kubernetes environment. And from an architectural point of view, if I simplify really greatly uh, the Kubernetes and OpenShift side, so I will have several nodes that are running pods and containers. Sorry. And uh, then I have the master. And uh, ManageEQ, once I define a provider, is connecting via the REST API to the master and pulling all of the information. And so it pulls all of the entities, which are the pods and nodes, the services and so on, the relationships between them, which services are serving which pods, and additional information such as events or metrics. But then we saw that uh, taking that information, you can get more out of it, and we played Sherlock. So we took additional information reported in a flat manner, we modeled it as first-class citizens in manage AQ, and we deduced the relationships. So for example, you can say, which two different containers are using the same image or which images are coming from the same registry. And this is an example of how a new provider summary page looks like, and I'm gonna zoom in into uh, the entities. So as you can see, these are services, replication controllers, pods and nodes coming from a Kubernetes environment. And uh, those three entity types are something that we are deducing uh, in ManageAQ, the containers, images, and uh, registries. And the OpenShift side of things uh, looks quite similar with uh, some subtle differences. So for example, what's interesting to see here, since I have four nodes in my environment, I can get an aggregated info on the uh, capacity of those nodes on the provider side. And if I look at the uh, entities, I can see that they are pretty much identical to the Kubernetes one, but I also have the OpenShift specific ones collected as well. Nodes are actually a very, very central part of our system because if we have no nodes, we don't have where to run our containers on. So we are collecting a lot of information on the nodes and analyzing it and adding more insights from the very basic of which operating system is running on the node, how many entities, how many containers are running on a node, how many pods are running on a node, what is the capacity and utilization of that, and in some cases, and I will show you that, what is the infrastructure the node is actually running on. Well, this is a node summary page, and I'm gonna zoom in into different sections to show what information is available. So we can see that we understand the capacity that is reported, uh, the operation systems info, we know which Docker and Kubernetes versions are running on that node, and uh, this is information of how many pods and containers, and in real environment, it's all clickable, so you can actually get to the exact entities and get all the information on them. And uh, here comes the interesting part. This is the underlying virtual machine. And uh, this relationship is not reported by Kubernetes or OpenShift. So what we're doing here is something that's called a cross-provider insight. Given that, uh, let's say, my uh, Kubernetes is running on an OpenStack environment, and both of them are defined and configured in ManageAQ, uh, we are able to correlate them and provide a layer uh, connection between the infrastructure and the cloud in the container. So in the end of the day, we can say that this container is running on this bare metal. And this is uh, the support that we currently have. It's OpenStack, Overtrev, and VMware vCenter. We are thinking to expand that support to more providers, and uh, since this is open source, uh, contributions are definitely welcome. 
And uh, this is uh, how it actually looks, or what, um, how is the uh, cross-linkage created. We take a specific identification that is reported on a node, on uh, the Kubernetes or OpenShift side. We correlate it uh, with information that we collect on virtual machines. And uh, once that correlation is made, we're able to create a single link. And uh, by doing that single link, we're able to do this entire chain of this container as part of this pod, running on this node, on this VM, and on the host, which is the bare metal. And then we, of course, can zoom out because we collect much more data. And we can correlate and understand uh, the traffic side of things, the storage side of things, between the image and the storage, and so on. And this is all still done with a very uh, single link between the node and the virtual machine. And this is how it looks in NJQ. So given that I am going to the node page, I'm able to click that, and uh, I will end up in the infrastructure area of NJQ in the virtual machine summary page. And from here, I can travel to all of the sides of the infrastructure. And this is also a very important uh, information. Since we're collecting capacity, we're also supposed to collect utilization, because otherwise, how can we ensure that we don't end up in this situation? Because <laughs> we actually want to be here, right? So container. A container is definitely a very important part uh, of the whole equation. And this is the information uh, that is collected for traceability. So uh, we know on which node the container is running on. We know part of which pod it is. We see the Docker ID is also collected here. And um, also very important, the image. What is the image that is running in the container? And there are more aspects of knowing things about image that we like to talk about. So um, we know what is the image name and uh, what is the Docker ID and so on. But we also would like to know what is the registry it's coming from, from whether it's a certified registry, whether this registry can be used on that environment, and so on. And so we're providing the information what registry exactly is this image coming from, and how many containers and which containers are using that image. And in some cases, we are unable to detect or that information is not reported. And, uh, and warning it is issued to administrator because uh, we need to, to have a look. Maybe this is an image that was manually imported to a machine and it's not supposed to be here. Registries are also giving us a lot of insight. So given that we have information about the registry, we know how many images are coming from that, what are the exact images, and how many containers and which containers are using images from that registry. And that information can help us decide uh, if we would like to take, let's say, do a downtime or an upgrade to a registry, what is it going to influence in our, in our environment. Pods are also a very central entity in Kubernetes and OpenShift, and there is a lot of information that's important to be collected about that, from which containers are part of it, which services redirect traffic to that, which machine it is running on, and whether it's controlled by a replication controller or it's a standalone pod. And we can see all of this information right here. <clears throat> and also the labels based on which the services and the replication controllers are picking whether this pod is relevant for them. So replicators uh, are um, responsible for the scaling part of things. And here we can see that the user defined three replicas of the pod. The current number of replicas is three, so the, um, the environment is healthy. And clicking here is going to provide us with the exact um, instances of the pods that are part of this replica set. And this is the selector, which is looking for the app equals guest book label on the pod to determine whether it should be part of the replica set or not. And there are a lot of more information collected, services, routes, events, project and namespaces, and I invite you to check the project. And there's another way to look at the information and see what is connected uh, to which entity, and that's through a topology view.
And since a picture is worth a thousand words, but actually a live demo is much cooler, I'll go with live demo. Okay, so I'm diving in into our provider containers and I select the OpenShift one. <coughs> yes, it's a giant jellyfish. And so here uh, we can, of course, hide information that we don't need right now, and it's going to be usable in large environments. We can also see the information, <coughs> sorry, in the tooltip about each entity and the color indication. So here, for example, we see that this pod failed. And uh, here we also see the information about VMs and hosts that are connected through the cross-provider insight. <clears throat> and clicking on the pod that failed will take us to its page, and we will be able to see more information for troubleshooting. And I would like to show you some <clears throat> features, two features that are actually in development as we speak. So the first one would be uh, new dashboards that are also providing us with a single view of aggregated information <clears throat> on our providers. And this view is going to be available on all of the providers together for containers, that is Kubernetes and OpenShift. So the inventory here is aggregated and the node information is available per node or all together or per provider or per project to see, for example, uh, which team gets which resources and what's the status with each and one of them. Smart state analysis on its own, uh, it's not a new feature in ManageAQ, it exists for virtual machines. But actually for containers, it's quite new. <coughs> and what it does, it inspects the packages included in an image. And later, combined with vulnerabilities database with security issues, we will be able to issue alerts for important security issues on running containers. And this is how it's gonna look like. So given that you have an image or you can do it as a bulk operation on multiple images, you click on perform smart state analysis. And once that analysis is done, this is gonna be the output. You will be able to see on each container, on each image, uh, what are the packages that are installed as part of the image. And uh, this is the ManageQ community. If you would like to ask questions, send contributions, uh, raise ideas regarding anything that you saw here. So this is the forum. And uh, this is the IRC channel. And our work on GitHub is typically labeled with providers containers. <coughs> These are the links for the project. And that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, feel free to approach me afterwards. <laughs>